It's hard to uh, say that Coast Salish culture exists strongly within me because it's been hidden from us. So we're constantly searching for it and it changes. And it's really fluid right now, I think. And I think that's like the, the basis of the show is talking about that fluidity and transformation in it. So the Coast Salish experience for me is like, we spend our time trying to rebuild that and try to understand it, right? Basically, we're given a box of shattered pieces and we have to it's like a puzzle without a picture to fix it, you know? Where, where, that, where the basis of your grandparents are from is one point where your culture starts. So there's a, there's a language connected to it, there's stories connected to it, and there's culture connected to it. Um, in 1884, we had a potlatch ban. Um, what that means is that we were banned from doing any kind of culture. We weren't allowed to sing songs, we weren't allowed to dress in indigenous garb, you we weren't allowed to speak the language. Right, uh, our ceremonies and our and our governance was shattered and illegal. Illegal to be indigenous. So now we're kind of learning those old ways again, and we're starting to have to try to separate them and go, okay, oh, oh, well, this is here, right? Oh, this piss is from here. This is from here, All right? And be able to go, okay, this is from where I come from. And so the more I research, the more we talk, the more that we are allowed to speak about it. Finally, we're going, ah, yeah, that story. Oh, no, I have this piece that ends your story. And then you find stuff, right? It, then it's not about me anymore. I've just been looking through things. I go, oh, well, this belongs to you and your people, you know, and giving information back to people that are from up the coast or finding someone's family name in a book or in a, in, in, in a ledger or a story and going, ah, this is, or finding a photo of someone's family and going, this is your photo. And then finding more stuff about myself and my family and being able to teach and teach our young people that who they are and they could be proud of these stories of, of our ancestors who did great things. For indigenous people, stories are law. Law for us is language. Language is what connects us to land. So stories is very important. All our stories are connected to land. If you hear indigenous stories, it's always about this mountain, how a river was formed, how the salmon got there, why blueberries grow here. So there's all these stories about the land and, and it connects us to the land through our names, how we're connected to the story. When I tell people, what people go, oh, what do you do for a living? They go, oh, well, I well, rap. Oh, well then. Right away, what do they think? They think, they think I rap about drugs, cars, clothes, hoes. But what I'm looking for is a new delivery system of hip hop that is educational, that is informational, that is innovative, that uses technology, but also uses old school uh, ancient storytelling to be able to take old stories and transform them into something new so that people can experience our cultures in new ways and our, and our cultural understandings. I doubt you know, even in this process of this project, I'll come to a full understanding of what Coast Salish design, what Coast Salish art and the intangibility of those, of those elements are. But I'll have a current understanding from that point in time and space when we open. And that's really all I can really offer. The show's called Intangible and it's not that we're, we're not making sense, it's that we don't have a, a concrete way, right? It's always changing and always shifting and transforming and transmuting and just like the nature of all things. I think by the time I'm 50, I would love to have some sort of understanding and be able to disseminate out of all the stuff I've looked at and just be like, here's what I know from this point in time and space. This is just a current understanding and in leaving something for other people to pick up behind me.